So finally, annotating with XML markup. But don't fret, we will have a break at half past because this is actually really easy and really fast. So um, the professor here, Georg Vogeler, usually explains this in one slide. I usually do a few more slides, but it's really easy to learn, so don't panic. On this slide, I have also placed a link of the, um, the World Wide Web Consortium's tutorial for it. So I'm going to upload the slides to the drive right after. I forgot to do that, but we'll do it right away. Mm, and the World Wide Web Consortium is essentially the biggest authority on all these um, data standard questions regarding the web. So if you find a resource that says um, W3, that's always a very good sign. And so their tutorials, they're basically from the source. You will also find the definitions of standards uh, on their websites, which is sometimes relevant the more you go into them. But they have really great tutorials, so just in case you want to know. So what is XML? XML uh, is the extensible markup language. I'm going to read the Wikipedia definition. Extensible markup language, XML, is a markup language and file format for storing, transmitting, reconstructing arbitrary data. It defines a set of rules for encoding documents in a format that is both human and machine readable. It also implements the paradigm of the separation of form and content. So an XML document is a semantic document. We describe data without specifying how we want it rep represented later. That's why I already mentioned we need data transformations, for example, to create a website from our data or create a print version. So XML is essentially a semantic description of data, which is something that's very familiar to humanities um, scholars. And, and the concept of annotating is also something that shouldn't be hard for you because it's, it's essentially what we do. XML is a meta language for the creation of standards. So I've been mentioning TI XML, the Text Encoding Initiative Standard. That's possible because XML is extensible. Extensible means create your own standard. Obviously don't, that's not the purpose of a standard. Although if you want to see a funny meme on standards, uh, there's one down the hall that says, there's so many standards, what are we gonna do? Create a new standard. But obviously the goal is that we all use the same standard and if everybody keeps creating new standards, it's not great. But there is this standard already of the text encoding initiative that is being maintained and extended uh, as, as uh, new things come up. If you feel like something is not in there yet, you can also contact them and they will discuss it and maybe include it. Or you could write an article about what you found in the text encoding initi initiatives journal, where for example, Sean also um, wrote an article about some of his work. Mm, yeah, so the file ending is xml.xml and a few related terms or other um, standards made by using XML are RSS, SOAP, XAML, MathML, GraphML, XHTML, RDF, KML, and also scalable vector graphics, SVG. Just in case you've heard of them before, these are all XML based, so learning XML gives you access to all of those as well. Mm, XML has a very simple set of rules. So this is, this is, so to say, my one XML slide that has all the information. If you know this, you know XML. I have a minimal example down here that um, has a, a declaration here that this is XML version 1.0. I have a root element that in this case I've called root, but usually would be called TI for you. And one example element that's called element with the attribute that has an attribute value. And the element has element content. And there's a comment here that is for human readers and will be ignored by the machine. So there are only a number of rules for XML. So you hierarchically nest below the root. And there's exactly one root element. So my boss always explains this as Russian dolls. So you only have one outmost Russian doll. And then on the inside, you could have multiple branches, but there's only one outmost doll. Um, XML is organized in start and end tags. Tag names can be case sensitive and empty elements are allowed and can be shortened. 
I'm not going to lay out all the rules on how you can construct an element because I, I basically have this exercise that says try to break it and then you will learn how your editor is going to communicate to you that this is not okay and it wants you to change things. So XML can be checked for so-called validity. That means validation if it complies with a standard. So it will check for you, are you respecting the TI standard? And well-formedness, that means following the rules of XML. So when you're going to try this exercise where you try to break it, that uh, would, try, try, would be trying to break the well-formedness. So you would not follow the rules of XML and see what happens. Thus, you will get error messages. And I feel that often people start panicking when things don't work, but they don't read the error messages. Most of the time, error messages, they're sometimes not good, but they are understandable, and they're there so you can read them and fix what the problem is. So please look at the error messages. That's why we're doing the exercise to break it on purpose, because I feel if you didn't break it on purpose, people start panicking and are like, this is not what I wanted to do. <laughs> But if you did it on purpose, you know what's the cause and effect, and you can learn to respect those rules. And there are rules on how elements can be named, which you can look up if you want to, but I think it works pretty well to just try to break it and then see which ones are okay. And if you follow the TI, they're obviously already named correctly, so this is not essential for you to learn by heart. And you could also, if that's anything to you, you could think of XML as a key value notation. So the elements would be the key and the content would be the value. And this is like an addendum. So this first line, that would be the prolog. That is like XML version 1 encoding UTF-8. It's the XML declaration. And you could also have information for processing instructions. So you will have to set off a few lines on the top of the document before you root. And I'd say most cases you can ignore it for now, but just know that it exists. And you can include document models that's optional, like uh, it's, um, the DTD or XML schema, RelaxNG, uh, Schematron. And what you should also know about is that there are entities. So there are certain protected, or we sometimes say escaped characters, that have meta meaning in an XML file. As you've seen, uh, the tags always have these um, pointy braces. So obviously, if you want to actually use one of those, you need to replace it. So uh, the system knows essentially, are you speaking in XML meta language or are you speaking in terms of content? So if you wanted this, um, uh, this opening pointy uh, brace, you would say ampersand, LT, and finish with a semicolon. Semi semicolon is the marker that the entity is over and ampersand denotes that the entity is opened. And because this is the case, for example, ampersand also needs to be an entity. If you want an actual ampersand, you, says, you say end amp semicolon. This is also very practical because this allows you to include, uh, include Unicode things directly into your document. So as you might know, in Unicode, there are historical symbols included or characters included, but not all fonts implement those. So there are theoretically there. You can tell a computer, I want this, but the font that is used, being used to display doesn't know it. So there's also a possibility of directly using these uh, entities to put them in. That might be very relevant for you for historical stuff. So just so you've heard of a few names about the XML family and vocabularies, XML is for the structured description <coughs> of data. There's XPath for navigating XML documents. There's XML Schema for a strict data model. XSL, the extensible style sheet language. XSLT, XSL for transformations, such as transforming XML documents. There used to be XSLFO, that's formatted output, to create print output, but that has been discontinued a long time ago. If you want print, I would suggest um, go for LaTeX. I'm a little biased, but uh, I think LaTeX is great. Um, yeah, there's XQuery. That's a query language for XML databases and many more. And a few standards um, that you might want to have heard about. XHTML, that's the hypertext markup language in XML conforming format. Not all HTML is XML conforming. 
EAD, the encoded archival description, TI, text encoding initiative, that's what we're going to learn today. The CEI, the Charters Encoding Initiative, is an invention of uh, Georg Vogeler here. Um, MEI, the Music Encoding Initiative. There is LIDO, that's Lightweight Information Describing Objects, which is for describing museum or collection objects. Scalable Vector Graphics, you've probably seen that before. KML, that's the Keyhole Markup Language for Geography. MathML or CML for Chemical Markup Language, and many more. Yes, so let's get to a brief practice session. It's not going to take long. So the purpose of this is for you to open your editor, make sure the editor works. We're not going to be doing much work now, but um, please all open your, yes, um, please all open your um, oxygen editor and create a new file. I think this was supposed to not say create new elements, create a new file first. You create a new XML file and you create new elements and find three ways to break it so that you get an error. And then fix the error, obviously. And afterwards, we can go for coffee. This should not take long. It's just to ensure that it's running for everybody. And if the uh, installing oxygen didn't work, uh, for example, that we can fix it. So opening oxygen should look something like this. And I'll show you. I'll show you what it looks like and what I mean in more detail. Okay. I'm I'm pressing this thing for a new element, a new uh, new document saying XML document. I get this uh, XML declaration and then I'll I'll create a root element that I'll call root, but I think that's actually one of the things that's not allowed, or I'm calling an element element. This is what I had in the example. I think this might actually uh, cause trouble. I think this is probably not allowed. Oh, no, it's allowed. But element is not okay. Are you complaining yet? I'll call this test. Yep, yeah, sure. Um, wait a second, I'm just going to try this. Yeah. No. Oh, no. What? Yeah, so I think element calling, uh, called element is, should not be allowed, but... So I click this to create a new element a new XML element uh, document and it gave me this declaration now I can call this books and now I will create an element that's called book and another one and these two elements would be um, sibling elements so they're on the same level but within the book I could start my bibliographic description I could say title, I could say extent, or let's say author to be, keep it more typical. Yeah, so this would be, the title would be a child element of book, for example. Book would be a child element of the root, that is books. And I can also put attributes, mm, title, I'll call it main, true, or title, no, I'm going to call it title, type, main, or type, short title, create another one that is type, full title, Oops, well, I get to save this. No. 
Oh yeah, so up here, this symbol is to validate, and that will not work because I haven't associated, I haven't associated anything with it. So if a TI document is associated with it, but I can test for well-formedness, and that, wait a second, can I escape the, yeah, so it says down here, now I need to scroll and open it again. It says down here that the document is well formed. Something that I could also do that might be relevant for you is this, and that is to format. In this case, it did, oh, it closed the author element automatically because there was nothing in it. This is what I meant by it. you can have empty elements. If I delete that again, it's open again. If I click this again, it's closed again. Yeah. And so now you could try to write something that's incorrect, like you say three, author, that is going to cause you an error, it's going to be marked like this. And down here it's also probably, it says the content of elements must consist of well-formed character, data or markup. So this would not be allowed. But for example, um, I said it's well-formed, it's um, case sensitive, so this would be a different element from the one up here. So be mindful of that. Yeah, I think that's essentially all you need to know for your first XML document. If you master this, then we are ready to go. And hope you realize it's not hard. And it's, it's amazing that nobody had trouble with oxygen. In my classes, usually, once I say, please open oxygen, it's like, what? <laughs> Nothing works. So thanks for doing your homework and installing it. And so it is not case sensitive. It is case sensitive. So, so this would not be recognized as the same. These are not the same, whereas these two would be considered two of the same type, essentially. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm going to write a comment as well, just so you've seen that. This is just for humans. So the machine will ignore this comment, and that's why it's also in a different color. For example, if you have a mistake somewhere, you could use comments to... We call it commenting out. So if there's a mistake and you don't know how to fix it, you could fix it by commenting it out. Yeah, and that's all we need. If um, somebody uh, in the video audience has problems with the installation or oxygen, um, please look it up online. You can usually type into a search engine, uh, oxygen editor, install problems. You can maybe look on Stack Overflow if there are problems, or also on the oxygen website that should usually give you all you need. And if you don't have a license, you will only have a trial license that's gonna expire after 30 days. And then you gotta think about, do I want uh, to buy a license or do I want to maybe use a different editor? For example, there's the Atom editor that some people use as well. Yeah, so thanks for your attention and let's get coffee. <laughs>